Hello, Kazgem here, and today we are checking out Surviving the Aftermath again. That's right, and we are going to be getting a colony started and showing you how you can have a successful start in Surviving the Aftermath. So, uh, we're going to go ahead and go ahead and just make a new colony, so new game, and eh, let's go ahead and just turn the tutorial part off. So, you're a beginner, you're looking to get started. These first couple sections are really easy. So the environment, uh, there's a lot of cool things aesthetically that happen later on in the game, but I, for beginners, just select number one. Same with catastrophes, say the worst has passed, and there's occasional catastrophes, and contamination levels up to 20%. I think that's reasonable, because uh, otherwise you're not going to have enough time to actually learn the game, at least in my opinion. Then, of course, resources. Uh, the group had well prepared in advance. This is really useful for you. Trust me, you're going to want the resources because you're going to mess up at the beginning. And honestly, uh, this is probably the hardest difficulty option to change. If I were to look at that, I mean, it's this is probably the one that is the hardest. So just be careful with it. But we're going to say that we prepared in advance. And then for ideology, this is basically your tech tree. So, you are going to decide, do I have a few extra options in survival, in colony efficiency, or in exploration? Now, beginners, I don't recommend you rely too heavily on exploration. Uh, there's a main reason for that, and that is you need to be focusing on the colony, because you need a good colony to have good exploration, because you can't explore without a colony. So. Let's go ahead and select either Hardy Survivalist or Colony Builder. And I'm going to go ahead and lean in towards... I would say Hardy Survivalist is probably the most user-friendly option. And then Gatekeeper is the same as the first three. You just select number one for the easiest time. See how easy that is? You just go ones straight across. And then for your specialists. So... You get three specialists, and these guys are super cool. You can use them to explore the map, you can use them to explore the world map, you can use them to uh, kill some animals and use them for food, you can use them to defend your area should it fall under attack, more on that later. And they all have different abilities. Now, let's just look through each of these abilities really quick so you at least somewhat understand them. So first, of course, we have speed. So that is their action points. So basically how far they can move on a given turn. This mainly affects the world map. And then attack is obviously their attack damage. So you can see some are down to 15, some are up to 25. And there are other specialists you can pick up in game that are outside of those bounds. And then of course research, this is very important. Research mission efficiencies. This is basically how quickly are you able to research. And being able to research fast is quite good, but it's not quite as good as scavenger if you're going to choose between the two. But we're going to be going for a more balanced approach. So we actually ideally want Platy here. Platy is actually really overpowered because, you know, they all have 6 AP. But yeah, she only has 6, 15 attack damage. But check that out. She does recover 20 HP per day, whereas a lot of other people only have 15 or so sometimes. And she also has 300 research points a day that she can grab. And she has plus 50% scavenging. Which, if you look around, there's only a couple people that are tied with her on that. And it's because she's a scavenger, but she still has a great research speed. So let's go ahead and keep her. She's always my number one pick. After that, I recommend going down to Makeda. Because she is a marvelous fighter. Because check that out. 25 damage. Recovers 20 HP per day. That is just stunning. I mean, if you look over here, yeah, it's about the same as down here. In fact, Makeda and Baron are basically the same skill set. But I like Makeda better because, I don't know, his smile creeps me out. And then, of course, for the last one, you want a scout to be able to scout further on the world map. And I would recommend... So, obviously, you want one of the scouts. Either Jin or Boon. And, honestly, it doesn't really matter which one of the two that you pick. I tend to like Boone. I don't know why, so I'm just going to pick him because, I mean, you know, got two girls. Might as well get a guy in there. And let's go ahead and hit continue. And then, obviously, we're going to design our flag, and we're going to give it 
tech. Yeah, blue flag with tech. And then the colony name is going to be... Ooh, Igopolis. You know what? Yeah, let's keep Igopolis. I kind of like that one. Survive and thrive. I love it. Hmm. Actually, hang on. Derp or die. Oh, I love that one so much. That's that's just legendary. Let's go ahead and keep that one. <laughs> and then this is your summary. Uh, I'm just going to go through that. But basically, this is a great way to just double check that everything is good to go. So let's go ahead and start game. So again, I'm going to be showing you how you kind of do your first steps. This isn't going to be a super in-depth guide to every system in the game, but this is going to be something that you can follow and have a successful start for your colony. Now, something you need to keep in mind, your map and your initial layout will not look exactly the same as mine, more than likely. So what you need to do is just keep in mind the concepts and be ready to adapt. So already we're going to go ahead and pause and then I'm going to select each of my specialists and we are going to send them in three random, pseudo random directions. Send one to the left, send one up, send one to the right. And this is for a reason. I'm trying to explore more of the map and you want to do this no matter what. You want to see what's around you. You want to see what your environment's like. And already we've got a big nasty pollution pit right here. And you want to stay away from pollution. So let's see if we can stay away from that. And it looks like there's a lot of pollution down there as well. Yikes, this is a very polluted landscape here. Sometimes you get lucky and you don't have a lot of pollution right near your entrance, but it looks like we didn't get so lucky this time. So let's go ahead and speed it up. You can use one, two, three keys and pause with the spacebar if you're looking for some hot keys there. And it looks like this might be at least a decent spot. Because, yeah, you got pollution all around here, so you don't really want to build that way, at least not initially, because there is a way for us to clean that up. And we will be cleaning it up eventually. So let's go ahead and pull our specialists back in. So it looks like we've found our spot. We want it to be somewhere around here because it is the most isolated. It's kind of a long, narrow corridor of less than polluted areas. So let's go ahead and plop that in probably right about here. So we're going to go ahead and build a building, grab the campsite, and check out those arrows. Those arrows are the direction that you're building or utility or whatever faces. And those arrows actually occur on the first blank square. Fun little thing, it really trips me up sometimes. So let's go ahead and just plop that in right about here. There we go. And that is instantly completed. It's the last instantly completed building you will see in this game. So now we're going to go ahead and click the campsite and shoot the flare into the sky. And just like that, our colony is started. Look at that signal flare. Beautiful. And now the inhabitants have arrived. So we've got a bunch of colonists and we've got a lot of problems. They need a place to live. They need water. They need food. And they need at the end, they need happiness, but for now, we're just going to worry about the basics. So, there's a quick few buildings that you absolutely need at the beginning. And the first thing, you're going to want to place down two emergency shelters. Count them. Two emergency shelters. And again, don't build them right on top of pollution. So, let's go ahead and plop a couple of those down right around here. We'll plop that one right here. Then we'll grab this guy, and this is just going to become like a little residential sector because we're like that. And then we're going to grab a tent. And the reason why you want the tent, yeah, it's lower efficiency, you can't fit as many people, but there's a very important detail. Colonists are less likely to reproduce in cramped shelters like this emergency shelter. So you want to make sure you have at least a tent. And if you build two emergency shelters, that's 12, so you would house everyone just fine. But if you have an additional two, 
That means that if you have a stray colonist wander up, you can house them. And it means that you can have your colonists start, we'll just say, producing colonists very quickly. So let's hope that that pans out to our advantage. Now, the next thing on our pallet after we place down that housing, go ahead and let them start working on that housing a bit. We are going to grab water. Water is incredibly important. It's actually one of the things I see people struggle the most with when they're starting this game. So what you need to do is pay attention to these numbers over here. You have your water production and efficiency. And the most you can get out of this water well typically is up to 10. And that's if enough of the tiles under it are colored with those little, I guess, water droplet icons. So you want to get that at or as close to 100% as possible while keeping it away from anything like, say, pollution. So let's just find the right spot. And it looks like that's a really good spot, but it's also super far away. So not sure that's the best idea. Let's go ahead and oh, check this out. We can place it right behind our original campsite. I like that a lot. I think that's a great spot. We're gonna go ahead and plop that in right here. Now, I've already felled a couple of trees. You're not going to want to do that too much. It's okay to do it for your first couple buildings for optimal placement, but I wouldn't make a habit out of it because you'll have a bad time. Now, that is one water source, and then a second water source that you're going to want to place is this guy, the water collector, which we actually don't have access to place anywhere right now because our specialists have not discovered a good location for it yet. That is interesting. Yeah, it looks like we've got water over here, water up there, water up there, up there, and we just haven't quite discovered it yet. So what we're going to do is we're going to take one of our specialists and mosey them on up here. And once they're up there, we are going to place the water collector in this little lake. Now, you want to place it in a good spot, but you don't want to take up too much space with it. Here's why. Your water areas are going to be shared by collectors like this here and there, and they're also going to be shared with fish. Like we need fishing stuff. We need people to be on fishing docks and aqua farms, aquaculture farms, things like that. The water well is up, beautiful. And now you're working on the water collector. And there's a reason why you build the water well first. It's because it's really quick and it puts a huge dent into your needs. So right there, it may have saved our water storage, which is great because you don't want that water storage to hit zero. Because if that water storage hits zero, while you are at a negative water intake, your people will start getting dehydrated. And that is less than ideal. Now that we got that sorted, we're going to talk about food. So we've got a consumption of 10, and you can see we're eating into our 96 tall stockpile. So we've got to do something about the food. Now, well, you're going to take this from a two-pronged approach. The first thing you're going to want to do is get a trapper going. And we're going to go ahead and get that going as close to the kind of town center, if you will, as we can. There we go. And then once that's built, I'll show you how to manipulate that a little better. And then we're also going to go ahead and get a stockpile built. That's right, we want a stockpile. It'll help us out and it'll go a really long ways towards making sure we are good to go. There we go, we're just waiting out here. There we go. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to move this work area. And you can see, I can now move this radius of where it can work. And I can gather concrete, I can gather planks, etc. So let's go ahead and place this work area right here so that they will gather from these three sets of planks, place them here, and have the added bonus of clearing out those areas so that we can place buildings on them. Lots of advantages there. Now, the next thing you want to do, you'll notice on the map that there are lots of these berry piles. That is a great initial food source. I cannot, cannot stress how important that is as an early game food source. So let's go ahead and get this guy in here. Get a little food storage thing. And once that's built, they'll start gathering from this berry bush immediately 
before moving on to this berry bush once you eventually move the work site. And now you have, it's not exactly successful, but it's not a failing area yet. You don't have really a failing colony at this point. But we do still need to improve it. And one of the best things you can do is find a place to plop down a fishing hut. So if you can place this fishing hut down and have it make sense and have it gather lots of fish, you are going to be so happy right here. In fact, look at that 93% efficiency. 95, 97, 99. So let's go ahead and accept the 99. Because that's pretty darn close to 100. I probably could have gotten 100 if I had placed this somewhere else. But that is by the by. Now, we're going to keep sitting our specialists around. Because if your specialists are doing nothing, they are effectively wasted. So you want to make sure that they're always moving. And this icon that it looks like I was about to ignore, but I promise I wasn't, is your first event. Now, we're going to ignore that. That's part of the Twitch integration. That's broken, by the way. This is your Visions of Gloom event. This is something that tends to happen pretty early on, and it's pretty much a split decision. You've got to decide what you're going to try to prepare against. And I would recommend just going with your gut and trying to figure out what it is. And odds are you're going to get it wrong, but I would recommend just try to pick either Fallout or Meteor because Meteor is actually really quick and easy to recover from. So we're just going to try and prepare for Fallout and see what happens. And what do you know? The emergency shelter is on fire. So this is something you've got to deal with in the game. You've got to select this and then you've got to hit repair immediately. And you'll note I actually paused while I accepted that event, and that was so that if something more intensive were to happen, I'd be able to respond to it in a much quicker fashion. So now we're working over here, we're trying to repair it, they're going to try and put out the fire as well before it starts to spread. And there we go, it's already under repair. Beautiful. And now, after that, uh, this is kind of a couple of bonus things. So. Something you're going to want early on is clean water storage. We're going to go ahead and place that in a nice safe place here in the back of the camp. And you're going to want that so you can build up a backlog of water. And once you have that backlog of water, you should be at least buffered from any catastrophes that might otherwise disrupt your source of water. And then the other thing you're going to want to do as soon as you can is you're going to want to build the gate. And you can't just build this any old place. There's only one place for it, and it's right here at the beginning. So, you're going to plop that right there at the entrance. And again, you want that up as soon as possible. So if you are, if you are in a situation where you have to choose between building this or building the tent and... What's that thing called? The clean water storage? Go for this instead. Go for this instead. You will thank me later. Because otherwise bandits can totally invade you and give you a terrible time. But, if it looks safe and you've got the resources, get this stuff built first. Because you want to build up your stockpile of water and whatnot. And that is how you get started in surviving the aftermath. In the next episode of this tutorial series, we will check out the world map. We will check out some of our initial building upgrades and check the game out from there. But until then, feel free to check out my Twitch stream at twitch.tv slash casgen. I will be streaming Surviving in the Aftermath a couple days a week. And yeah, feel free to check that out. Like this video if you liked it. Drop a sub if you want to see more content like this. And until next time, this is Kazgen signing out. See ya!